lovers, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are going to talk about mixtures and the different ways on how to separate them. Different mixtures are present around us. We can see mixtures in food, on the beach, in our house, and anywhere else. But before we go through itemizing numerous examples of mixtures, let's first define what is a mixture. Mixtures are physically combined substances that can be separated into their original components. Now, let's have some examples of mixture. We have here blood, seawater, salad, cement, ice cubes in the juice, and many, many more. Mixtures have two different types. We have heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixtures are mixtures that have a uniform composition and appearance. These are the mixtures in which the components are evenly distributed over the major components of the mixture. A homogeneous mixture is a mixture that is well mixed. It's so well mixed that you can see the different parts of the mixture. Let's take a look at examples of homogeneous mixtures. Air is an example of homogeneous mixture. Why? It's because it is made up of different gases that are so thoroughly mixed together that they appear uniform. Another example of this mixture is an alloy. Alloys are made up when two or more metals are mixed together. Other examples are milk, blood, quartz, and even sugar dissolved in water is considered as a homogeneous mixture. The second type of mixture is heterogeneous mixture. These mixtures are composed of two or more substances that can be distinctly observed and even separated relatively easily. These are the mixtures in which the composition is not uniform through the mixture. Heterogeneous mixtures are composed of two or more phases. A phase is any part of a sample that has a uniform composition and properties. Just like what we see in the picture, when an oil and water are combined, they do not mix evenly, but instead form two different and separate layers. Each of the layers is called a face. Now let's see what are the examples of heterogeneous mixtures. First example is an oil and water. Second is pizza, ice cubes in a drink, cereal with milk, salad, and even a chocolate chip cookie. Let's have a quick view comparison of these two mixtures. When it comes to uniformity, Heterogeneous is not uniform, while homogeneous is directly opposite. Heterogeneous mixtures can be physically separated, while homogeneous is not. And when it comes to the number of phases, homogeneous always have only one phase, while heterogeneous have two or more phases. Since mixtures are combinations of substances, there are different ways or techniques on how to separate them. First technique is called decantation. Decantation is a process where liquid can be manually separated from sediments or another immiscible liquid with different density. Decantation has two different processes. First is used for immiscible liquid separation, while the second one is used for liquid solid separation. Immiscible liquid separation can be done manually or it can be done using an apparatus. For example, when oil and water were combined, they formed two phases. To perform immiscible liquid separation, 
we can manually pour the oil to another container and leave the water in the original container. Or, we can use a separatory funnel to separate the two liquids more effectively. Let's now have a closer look at liquid-solid separation. Just like immiscible liquid separation, this can also be done manually. This can be manually done by pouring the liquid substance to another container, leaving the solid substances in the original container. Liquid-solid separation can also be done by using centrifuge. This device uses centrifugal force to separate various components of a fluid. A centrifuge can be a very effective filter that separates contaminants from the main body of fluid. Now that we've already learned the different process of degantation, let's take a look at what mixtures can be separated using this technique. We have here, first, red wine, cream and milk, mud and water, and plasma from blood. The second separation technique is called evaporation. It is a process in which a liquid changes into gaseous form upon heating. This allows the liquid to evaporate, leaving the soluble solid behind. Examples of mixtures that can be separated using evaporation are salt water and sugar combined with a water. Another separating technique is called filtering. Filtering is a method used for separating an insoluble solid from a liquid. It is the process of separating suspended solid matter from a liquid by causing the latter to pass through the pores of some substance called a filter. The liquid which has passed through the filter is called the filtrate. Filtration works best when the solute doesn't dissolve in the solvent. Here are the examples of mixtures that can be separated using filtering. Brewed coffee. Brewing coffee involves passing hot water through the ground coffee and a filter. The liquid coffee is the filtrate. Another examples were pebbles in water, cornflakes in milk, and water in pasta. Our fourth separation technique is called sieving. It is a simple technique for separating particles of different sizes. Small rocks in the sun is an example of mixture that can be separated by sieving. Our fifth technique is called magnetic separation. It is a process in which magnetically susceptible material is extracted from a mixture using a magnetic force. A mixture composed of sulfur and iron fillings can be separated using magnetic separation technique. Let's now have a quick wrap up on what we have discussed earlier. Mixture is a physical combined substances that can be separated into their original components. Mixture has two types, namely heterogeneous mixture and homogeneous mixtures. There are different techniques to separate mixtures, namely decantation, evaporation, filtering, sieving, and magnetic separation. That's all for this video, learners. I hope you've learned a lot while having fun. But before we end up, just a gentle reminder, never look at your flaws as a weakness. Instead, Always consider it as an opportunity to grow and learn new things. Thank you learners! See you in the next video! Please like and subscribe!